First of all, for my part, I would like to thank the uh, organising programme committee of the ECR for inviting me to uh, give this interactive session today, which I hope you all find informative and also enjoyable. The first case is uh, a 24-year-old lady, three months following a left-sided decompression discectomy at the L5-S1 level, who represents with left-sided sciatica. Just going to show you two slides. Here you can see uh, we have the sagittal T1-weighted uh, image. This is a T1-weighted post-intravenous gadolinium and the sagittal T2-weighted image. And just remember that the previous surgery was performed at the L5-S1 level on the left side. And here she is presenting it three months later with, again, a recurrence of left-sided sciatica. And the question is, the cause of this patient's symptoms is degenerative disc disease at the L5-S1 level, recurrent disc herniation at the L5-S1 level, epidural fibrosis at this level, infective discitis at this level, or it's unclear because gadolinium has been used. Please vote now. We have over 300 people are voting. Would you like to just complete your votes now? And have we got the results coming through? Okay, and that's excellent. Um, the answer, as you can see, and uh, identified by the majority uh, of people, is that this is a case of epidural fibrosis at the L5-S1 level. We'll just go through those images uh, again. And here, one can identify that certainly surgery has been performed at the correct level, because of that, of course, that's always an important point to uh, note. You can appreciate the enhancing soft tissue here posteriorly at uh, this uh, respective level. And on the axial images, here we have the T1-weighted study, and if one was just to look at that in isolation, it could be confusing about what is actually going on in the lateral recess here. However, when one administered intravenous gadolinium, note the beautiful soft tissue enhancement surrounding this left S1 nerve root, and also this enhancing scar tissue right back into the discectomy site. So this helps confirm the diagnosis of epidural fibrosis. Of course, if this was a recurrent disc herniation, one would not expect to get this uh, degree of enhancement. And also the other identifiers that we mentioned of infective discitis, again, one expects uh, that to retain uh, or to lose the definition of the end plates, which has not occurred in this case. So the take-home point from this case is that post-operative epidural fibrosis develops early and enhances with intravenous gadolinium. Moving on to case two, this is a case of a 66-year-old man who underwent a right-sided discectomy at the L4-L5 level, and two weeks post-surgery, he complained of recurrent right-sided sciatica. Here one can see the sagittal T1 weight.